Good evening and welcome to this week's episode of the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Locke Fox, and uh, we've got quite a show in store for you. But first, we start, as we always do, with some quick show news. Uh, to the dulcet uh, arrangement of the Amar undock this week, um, we expect Burn Amar, Amar to happen this weekend. Um, sources are saying soon. Everybody says before the end of the month. I expect it this weekend. I know I said that last weekend, but uh, for serious, for reals this time, guys. It means it. Um, if you want to follow the show, the best places to do so is just remember Eve Prosper. That will get you to Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, the blog, and the podcast. Um, be sure to subscribe where wherever that works out. Um, I know that we are running a uh, Twitch subscriber giveaway. I was hoping to do that draw on air today, but I wasn't able to put the pieces together to make the draw. So I'll be uh, pinging people this weekend with with the prizes we have a old subscribers and new subscribers pool uh each getting a each getting a plex so there's still time to enter if you hear this before uh let's say friday night also if you want to support the show you can donate at our patreon uh that helps keep the lights on that's not just me who produces this show we have uh we have a lot of people working on the tools and getting uh pieces up um Sending a beer to the beer pool uh, is extremely, sincerely appreciated. Uh, also, I can't quite announce uh, some pretty big news, uh, but I would encourage everyone who is who is on the fence to uh, get their Eve Vegas tickets soon. That's going to be my uh, my vague tweet about that piece of news. Um, and also, this show might be a little bit thin because uh, it's one of our sparsest weeks for flags yet. Uh, usually we see about 550 or more in our price flagging system, and we only saw 370, which is uh, very, very low. So uh, we'll see what happens over the week. Um, it might just be an off week as people start going on vacation. We might see some doldrums uh, ahead of Fozzy Sob. So um, just a little bit weird. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and move into the news. Uh, in the news, the main thing that just came out today is that uh, CCP is moving their offices. Uh, they're rather famous for their waterfront office uh, that they've been in for a while. Um, the I'll be linking in the show notes the... Uh, uh, a translation of the Icelandic news article that uh, brought this up, but uh, they are moving to the local university instead, uh, closing up their lease and moving over. So if you want to get the tinfoil out, this would be a great chance to get the tinfoil out. Uh, otherwise, the people who, uh, all the people I talk to who might have their ear closer to the ground aren't really worried about it. And it's barely news, but uh Eve Reddit will be throwing up about it for the next couple of days. Also, a dev blog was released today about uh, an update on the Drifters, a general lore and information thing going on. Um, I didn't get a chance to pick pick through it really hard, but uh, there's some pretty interesting information uh, about the Drifters and the lore. So if you wanted to, if you wanted a chance to catch up, this is a great chance to do so. Uh, in Alliance tournament news. The uh, auctions have closed. I know that last week we talked about the there being four slots up for Plex auction, and those went to Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork, Agony Empire, Affliction, the We Hurt Initiative, uh, sorry, and the We Hurt Initiative. Um, of the teams participating in the auction, there were a few that missed the mark uh, that were a bit surprising. Uh, FC, who has been a... Uh, who's been a regular in the Alliance tournament, didn't make it. Red Alliance and Red vs. Blue did not make it, which is stunning in my opinion. Um, also, Sleeper Social Club, Solar Fleet, and The Initiative were other previous Alliance tournament uh, participants that uh, did not make the mark. So it's kind of interesting that uh, how many how many did not make it into the tournament this year. Um 
we'll have to we'll have to do a bigger look breakdown of exactly who made it and who didn't uh perhaps later but uh thought that was that was rather interesting with that let's go ahead and move into plex um plex like i said we expected it to rise slightly because of the plex auction it didn't rise as much as i expected but uh, we saw a pretty decent spike into the weekend um Again, I think we should come off this spike. I think it's a little too hot too fast, but uh, we'll see. You can see that the volumes are a little anemic uh, compared to the last few weeks, so this might just be driven by speculators. Uh, and then if we look as at the year-long perspective, um, you'll see that the, the recent spike is pr a pretty sharp slope. So... Um, I expect this to come down a bit in the in the over the weekend, so uh, I would not pay 950 for a Plex if you could avoid it. Um, but uh, this this slope, if it doesn't break, uh, may may start a runaway to one billion esque. It's a it's a low probability, but a non-zero one. Uh, if we look at the buy and sell spreads, um, we see that. Uh, it looks like some orders have been have been bought out. Some large orders may have been bought out, driving the price up. Um, again, I think that this uh, that this margin is extremely thin compared to our regular moving average. Um, I expect it to come down, but I don't know by how much or by when. If we look at the other RMT tokens against each other, we still see weakness in the multiple pilot training certificates. They are still, even at sell order, cheaper than uh, Plex as an alternative. So again, keep that option in mind. And if you can uh, deal with buy orders, you could actually get a pretty decent deal on these things. Um, if you bought in, I wouldn't sell yet. Uh, I wouldn't sell until we're back at parity with... Uh, Plex, and to be honest, uh, I would want a billion esque for, for my multiple pilot training certificate if I were in the market. Moving on to minerals. Uh, minerals are going to be pretty quiet like they were last week. Uh, Tritanium is trending downwards to 5.2, um, but in the all in all, it's pretty flat. Uh, five, it may hit 5.2 over the weekend. Um, no reason to think it's going anywhere up or down. Um, it's going to keep this very slight downslope, in my opinion. Uh, Pyrite is taking a sharper turn down, dropping below 11. I think this is uh, particularly weak, um, and I expect us to rebound to 11, but that's that uh, also could not happen. Um, equal chances of it continuing to fall slightly. Mexilon is also showing the same weakness that Pyrite was showing. Again, I think that this is just a local weakness and uh, we should we should be rebounding. But again, with uh, the way that everything is going, this may not be. I may be completely wrong. Uh, Isogen took a particularly sharp dive, moving from 105 to 100 uh, over the last week. Uh, again, this is extremely weak territory. I would expect it to turn around or at least flatten out at 100. I don't believe it has much more room to fall, but I don't think we're following normal market forces at the moment. Uh, Noxium staying relatively flat. Uh, we had made a prediction that we may have seen this ripple repeat, and it kind of did in the weakest way possible, and dropped down. Uh, I don't think there's much to say about Noxium uh, in this case. Zydrine uh, had been showing some weakness last week, but has since recovered. We're back to about 1,400 a unit. Uh, no reason to believe it's going to go one way or the other too badly. Uh, Megasite, again, we saw some weakness in, in last week, but we've recovered most of the ground. And Morphite, which was the really weird darling last week, um, has since lost most of its momentum, but continues to be unstable. Uh, if you can, if you have more fight and you can sell it, uh, at a profit above 10k, you really need to be selling it. Um, if you need to be buying it, I would be looking for buy orders, uh, sub 10k, but understand that we, this bubble could pop, uh, at any moment ahead of Fozzy Sov. Um, once, once we have Fozzy Sov pass and we start seeing the, uh, the empires grind against each other. We might see things stabilize out 
uh, but I don't know what exactly that level is going to be. And then if we look at the buy and sell margins uh, over the last few weeks, we see the the spread on Isogen shows uh, more weakness for more falling, but uh, RSI makes me think it's not it can't fall that far. So I think these buy orders will, will uh, come up again. And then more fight would be the other weird one to watch. Uh, the margins are getting pretty thin, but it could go either way still. Moving on to fuel markets. Uh, fuel isotopes, we keep seeing the same thing we've been seeing for the last few weeks. Um, Amar is high, uh, Kaldari is climbing, uh, thanks to reaction passes coming online. Um, Galente is staying flat. I kind of expected this to track up as well, but, uh, perhaps there just isn't as much demand as I'm anticipating. Um, with Burn Amar happening, I expect as soon as, as soon as the Imperium is done, doing their business in Amar that I expect helium isotopes to cross down below the 700 mark. Uh, but we'll see what happens uh, in their fight. Fuel blocks are, like we say every week, they track uh, the the isotopes. Uh, we see the spike in Kaldari fuel blocks. We see a particularly sharp spike in Amar fuel blocks, which means this is a great opportunity to buy up some Amar isotopes turn them into fuel and sell them before the weekend. But I would expect this to come back down uh, by Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and last but not least, strontium clathrates uh, have sh have been on uh, a series of spikes. Um, we saw that with the announcement of the Entosis link being fueled, we saw a spike. The release of the Entosis links showed a spike. Um, we're, we're coming down off that spike. I don't think the volumes are that particularly high. So I don't know where we're gonna, where we're gonna land on this one. Um, if you had got into this market and, uh, got to ride out the spike, I think it's a good time to sell. I don't think the prices are gonna get better. Uh, but the other option is to hold out for Fozisov and wait for another blip, um, as people get resupplied ahead of the uh, solve fight there. And moving into outliers. So with more fights spiking last week, I made a strong prediction about moon materials following suit that uh, with more fight driving up, we should see uh, the whole tech two market start to activate i guess for lack of a better word now there are some bright spots like we see photonic metamaterials have jumped significantly we've seen uh phenolic composites come out of a ditch at uh, 1200 at 1200 up to 1500 but have since settled down to 1400 um we've seen some just completely buck the term like fermionic condensates uh keep tracking down thanks to uh probably a stable uh, high-end supply. Um, I still think it's worth watching. Um, I may have been premature on saying that uh, ha the happy times are here again, but the markets are doing some very interesting things, and this would be a great spot to be either speculating in or starting up reaction passes. Um, where these go, a lot of other pieces of the market will follow. So, uh, it behooves you to understand what's going on here. And if we look down into the, uh, actual moon materials, a couple that stood out were cesium taking a, uh, sharp turn upwards, um, and and titanium, which I wouldn't highlight usually. Titanium is an R8, and all of Goonswarm and Company live on top of the part of the map that's full of titanium. It's a regional. It's a regional asset, and uh, the prices keep going up. Um, I don't think this is sustainable, but if you have some, I'd sell some, and uh, the prices should pop soon. I, I would expect these prices to pop as soon as Mar is finished. Moving on to ships, uh, we've got our eye on the Ishtar, which last week was announced for getting a nerf, uh, another nerf, uh, because the Ishtar is just too good. Uh, and we've seen the prices come down slightly. Uh, we're still not seeing a, a uh, exodus from the Ishtar, so um, 
if you want to be be careful about it, you might actually be able to make some bucks uh, playing the highs and lows. Um, I expect it to kind of slump for for now, but we may see another uh, resurgence when Fozisov launches, just because it still holds a powerful spot in the fleet meta. Uh, the Loki has been tracking up significantly. If you have got into the Tech 3 market, now is a great time to sell. Um, this is not a great time to buy, obviously. Um, I don't, the volumes aren't really following along, so it doesn't look like a resupply, but it might be a constraint in, in manufacturing, which should, uh, pop this bubble over the weekend, uh, if I'm reading the graphs right. Uh, the Tengu is another one we're watching, uh, because of the slippery peat setup. Um, and it has been chugging along upwards for a little while now. Uh, again, we see highs on the weekends and then we slump into weekdays. Um, I think we're still on an upward track. Uh, it'd be a good time for producers and it's going to be a good time for producers as soon as, uh, Burna Mar is complete. Uh, I expect the raw material cost of uh, T3s to come down after Burnham R, so this would be a great chance to stockpile. Uh, but you're going to have to wait a week until they're done. So once Burnham R happens, you watch the market, you wait for the prices to fall because uh, people stay home during that week, during that what, however long that is. And then they will, they will dump on the market all that extra supply that they had been sitting on while sitting at home. So, um, and I expect that to show the biggest impacts in the T3 market. Another interesting one brought up by friend of the show, Alange, uh, is the Caracal has been, uh, tracking upwards against the, uh, trend of minerals tracking downwards. Um, and then it's big brother, the Cerberus has been tracking up significantly. Um, now this looks like a flavor of the month kind of change. And if you have the opportunity to buy, to sell, I would sell. This is a great chance for producers, but I also expect producers to pop this bubble over the, over the coming weeks. So, um, if you're not already in it, it's kind of, uh, too late to play, but keep an eye on this. We might see, uh, producers, overproduce and drop the price down to uh, 160 million, at which point it might be a decent chance to buy. Uh, then we move on to the Talos uh, attack battle cruiser has been tracking up again. Uh, this isn't exactly the best tool for, for uh, high set ganking, but it's one of the popular ones. Um, Again, it's a popular ship in general, and it's moving against the mineral curves, so it's a good chance to jump on this one. Also, the tornado continues to stay high against the uh, down slump in mineral prices, so again, this is a great chance for producers. Um, so check those margins. Though I expect tornado uh, supply, I expect tornado prices to pop as soon as Burnamar even starts. Uh, we'll see if, uh, they actually, usually, um, the, the Ministry of Love, uh, guys have things figured out so that, uh, participants aren't buying off the market, but I expect as soon as things are done that they'll liquidate a lot of that stock, so we might see prices crash afterwards. Uh, another interesting one, just because I've never seen it, uh, kick, kick the, uh, kick our triggers before is the succubus um we've seen a big dive down in price and if i were a buying man i would totally buy one now um the it's not an extremely popular ship as you can see we're looking at um something in the range of 20 sold a day um but if you need a succubus uh the prices aren't going to get any better than right now so go to the market go buy some uh go fly around and kill people Next, we move on to the Leopard, which we've seen uh, on a slow but steady rise up. And um, it has since been slowly falling. We, we see it crest the 100 million mark and um, been working its way down slowly. Now, I don't want to give this a buy, uh, a buy rating yet because north of 80 million still seems pretty high. 
Um, but I would also maybe keep an eye on some of the buy orders and see if you can uh, get something in the 70-ish range. Um, I don't expect them to spawn more leopards. Uh, I still think they have a use beyond just being a collectible. Uh, so I do think the prices will go up eventually, but it might be a, uh, it might be a few, it might be a few months before this really turns around. So if you're patient and you have a little bit of money to sit on, um, this one would be a decent, the leopard is a pretty decent one to, uh, to look at. Another, uh, special edition asset, the Prime. Uh, has been tracking up significantly. And uh, again, I, it looks like somebody bought out a bunch of orders and the prices are uh, are resettling afterwards. So um, this one probably won't show up in next week's uh, analysis. But it's interesting to see. Uh, looks like there's some pretty decent players who are uh, buying and selling in this and uh, perhaps... A newcomer or two guys did this did the same thing at the wrong time and screwed up the prices. So, uh, yeah, this the the prime is a pretty interesting one. Um, it's replace you know the prime a has the bonus of being a uh, pi ship, but its whole role has been replaced by the uh, the industrial rebalance and the um, goram the the salvage ship which i'm totally spacing on um so i don't i don't expect this to be an investment opportunity i just thought it was an interesting piece of news uh another interesting one uh because it's just been so wild has been the incursus uh we saw it take a huge huge swing up and a subsequent swing down um, I expect this one to recover pretty quickly, but again, the volumes are pretty low sitting around the 200 per day, uh, mark. So I don't know if there's a whole bunch of opportunity for anyone to speculate in, but a decent place to keep an eye on prices. So, uh, another interesting, uh, spike and fall looks like the flycatcher. Um, we may have seen a supply constriction causing the prices to climb. Uh, north of 60 mil, but then uh, we've seen suppliers come and crash the price to just under 50 mil. And uh, this would be a great chance, again, to uh, jump into the market, uh, to buy up, um, expect to hold on to things for a little bit. Uh, volumes have been a little hot. Uh, I I like invest. I, I like it when there's a chance to invest in uh, Hickters and Dictors. Because uh, these spikes don't happen very often and the prices tend to be pretty stable. So if you see a spot like right now when uh, prices are particularly low or particularly high, uh, when they're low, it gives you a chance to buy in and ride the wave back up to normal. And when they're high, it gives you a chance to build and sell uh, if you're fast enough. Um, that's a much riskier proposition, but not a not an unpopular one. Um, another another ship in our analysis has been the Tempest Fleet issue. We've seen it uh, going down in price for the last couple of weeks. Again, we expect this with the Minmatar cash out. Uh, I'd expected it to. Uh, I have expected it to bottom out over the week, but uh, prices still seem pretty weak. Um, we'll see where this goes in the upcoming weeks. But again, volume is very low on this ship. All right, now on to the last section of the show, the prediction review, where we, we look at the look at my performance at predicting things, which uh, usually is not as good as I'd like it to be. Uh, we looked at last week jump freighters uh, because there's been a sudden weakness in the market. Um, the the uh, they're all showing rather weak prices now. Um, I think it's a pretty decent chance to jump in on some of these buy orders if you have a lot of money to burn, but expect things to move very slowly. So this is, this is a patient's man, patient man's, uh, investment. Um, if you're doing buy orders and can stomach the, uh, can stomach it for sell orders, 
this would be a pretty decent place to invest if you believe me in my prediction that moon materials are going up soon um then these should follow along um i if you get a good deal on a buy order i have a hard time believing the price will go much lower is i guess the best way to put it i think they're not a bad buy opportunity I just don't know how much money you can expect to make and how quickly you can get that money back. Um, another one that I should have caught last week, and I don't know why I didn't highlight it, was the small hyperspatial velocity optimizer ones. Um, we saw a huge spike up. Uh, looks like somebody was buying out a whole bunch of them. Um, actually, no, I lied. It looks like there was a supply constriction or something, something funky was going on. We didn't see a whole bunch of volume bought, but we saw the price, uh, spike up. And then, um, we see everything come back down again, uh, to a spot that I think is under where, where I think it's undervalued, but we'll see what happens. Um, and another one that I probably should have picked out was the Blackbird, um, rising against the uh, mineral trend uh, it has since popped and the opportunity to buy in at the va in the valley w has passed so unfortunately even though i was wrong and i missed it there's nothing we can do about it because it's just the both opportunities have passed uh, and then last week i mentioned the hyena i called it a covert op ship though because i am bad uh thinking it was the cheetah but uh, it's actually the electronic assault frigate, as I was corrected. And um, we saw the prices come down, and they've come back up. So if you'd managed to buy in, I would love to hear about it. Uh, this actually turned out to be a pretty decent investment. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think the prices are going to come down a little bit from where they are right now. But with the high price of Morphite and some of the uh, rises in the moon material markets... Prices could stay as high as they are right now. And with that, that's the end of our show. Um, I want to thank everyone who tuned in live on Twitch. You can see us live every week uh, at Friday at 0200 at twitch.tv slash Eve Prosper. If you want to follow the show, all you have to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, the blog, and the podcast. If you want to support us uh, monetarily, please consider donating to our Patreon. Uh, this is not a one-man project, and it is not free to produce. And everyone who contributes, I sincerely thank you for your for your uh, patronage. Um, I know I owe you guys some uh, content, but uh, things are finally uh, getting down at work, so I can actually deliver on some of those promises. So... Um, going to be working on those in the upcoming weeks um we'll see if we can get some extra content out for you again i've been your host lock fox and this has been the eve prosper market show we'll see you next week